Hello, friends. Today, we will talk about a managed ceiling light fixture that operates on the Zigbee 3 protocol, Acura L1350. It's a bright, quality, and quite affordable gadget that is perfect for lighting small rooms. Thanks to the presence of warm and cold white light diodes, the chandelier allows you to adjust the color temperature according to your preferences, as well as the time of day. Next in the review, we will look at its design, capabilities, and compatibility with various smart home management systems. But for now, please like this video so that more people interested in the topic of smart home can find it. And subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so before. Device Type Ceiling LED Light Fixture Model Acura L1350 Communication Protocol Zigbee 3 Maximum Power Up to 24 watts Number of Diodes 48 Pieces 24 Warm and Cold White Each with a Power of 1 Watt Color Temperature From 2700 to 6500 Kelvin Color Rendering Index Not Less Than 90 Power Supply Voltage 220 Volts Size Diameter 350 Millimeters Thickness 60 millimeters. Operating temperature range from minus 10 to 40 degrees Celsius. Humidity from 0 to 85 percent. Protection class IP40. Recommended area from 5 to 20 square meters. Speaking of affordability, during sales, which often occur on AliExpress, the light fixture often has coupons and discounts applied, and a significant part of the order, about 10 percent, can be paid with coins collected in the app. In this case, I ordered the light fixture during the November 11th sale, adding an Acura 2-button wireless switch to the order. This allowed me to use an additional coupon. Altogether, it cost me just over $45. The light fixture is delivered in a dense cardboard box. On the front part, there is a schematic image of the device in the manufacturer's logo. On the side, there are brief parameters of the device, which I have already mentioned. The abundance of hieroglyphs in the model number indicate that this version is for the Chinese market. Let's see what's inside. The chandelier is located in a special foam compartment that protects it from damage during shipping. The dense cardboard from which the box is made also contributes to this protection. The package includes the light fixture, a separate base with the controller and diodes, a matte diffuser, a mounting kit, and a small instruction manual. The base is metallic, with diodes and a controller on it. It is mounted to the ceiling, for which there are three holes provided for using the included fasteners. The diffuser is matte and serves to evenly disperse the light, making it uniform. It is installed and removed from the base with a slight twist around its axis. All these points are indicated in the instructions, which, however, are written in hieroglyphs in Chinese. The instructions also mention compatibility with Mi Home and Acura Home Control Systems. The diodes are arranged in a circle in two rows. White and warm ones alternate, one after the other, which I will show in more detail later. In the center is a block to which the wires from the power grid are connected. For this purpose, there is a screw terminal block for phase, neutral, and ground. It serves as a power supply and a Zigbee LED controller with two control channels for warm and cold white light. To change the color temperature, one of the channels is dimmed, for example, to get cold light. The brightness of the yellow is reduced, and vice versa. At a temperature of 6,500 Kelvin, only the white diodes light up. At 2,700 Kelvin, only the yellow ones. At a neutral temperature, all 48 diodes are on at half power. This achieves a uniform light flow. This light fixture will be connected via an Acura Zigbee switch without a neutral line. Its relay is constantly closed, supplying power to the chandelier, but it can be disconnected if necessary, for example, for some work or reboot. The button is disconnected from controlling the relay and works as a wireless button. Therefore, for stability, I immediately install a ballast capacitor. It is connected in parallel to the light fixture, to the phase and neutral. This will provide power for the switch without a neutral line, which has requirements for a minimum load power. More on this can be seen in a separate video, the link to which you will find in the description. All tests and connections I perform on a stand, the installation in its permanent place will be at the end. At the first power supply, the light fixture turns on in cold light mode, with only half of the diodes lighting up. At this point, the pairing mode is activated. To manually initiate it, you need to turn the power off and on five times. This causes the chandelier to enter a breathing mode.
I will start testing the operation with smart home management systems with my home. I have the original version installed, with the region set to mainland China. I will be connecting through the Xiaomi Gateway 3, updated to the latest version available at the time of filming. We launch the connection mode and in the list of compatible devices, we check for the presence of our review hero. The model is found in the list, although, I repeat once again, the connection mode is the same for all, just selecting from the list shows the description of translating the specific device into pairing mode. The chandelier itself goes into it after power is supplied and connects to the gateway. Next, the initial setup wizard starts. In it, you can choose the installation location, specify a name, and immediately add it to one of the recommended scenarios. But all this can also be done later. Now the chandelier is displayed in the list of child devices of the gateway to which it is connected and in the overall system list. From here, you can launch its plugin. On the main screen, you can control the turning on and off of the light fixture, adjust its brightness and color temperature using sliders. Accordingly, the color of the window background changes. Just below, there are five preset scenes where the brightness and color temperature settings are already fixed, day, reading, cozy, TV, and night. This is what the neutral light mode looks like when both white and yellow diodes are working. Passing through the matte diffuser, the light becomes uniform. Next is an option that allows you to set a time for automatic turning on and off of the light fixture, a scheduler. Such tasks can be either one-time or periodic. For periodic tasks, you need to set the days of operation, every day, work days, there is an option to set the days of the week manually. Also, you need to specify the start and end time. The lowest option is the delayed light off. You can set it for one of the preset intervals or specify manually. It works only when the chandelier is on. If the light is off, the option is inactive. The general settings menu. Here there is a very important and useful option, state memory. If it is enabled, then when power is lost and restored, the chandelier will revert to its previous status. There is also a menu for choosing one of the five preset scenes. Here you can also group light fixtures into one group, which can be useful when you need to control several at once. The firmware version is 28. It is indicated that this is the current version. I will return to this point later in the video. Now let's move on to automations. We'll start with the trigger section, events that lead to their activation. We check in the devices section if our chandelier is available there and find it in the specified location. For triggers, you can use events of turning the light fixture on or off. For example, turn off additional lighting when the main light is turned on in similar cases. For use in the action section, there are many more different options available and this is logical. Turning on, turning off, and toggling state. Increasing and decreasing brightness, switching and setting brightness when turning on the light fixture. Similar brightness options for color temperature, lowering, raising, setting. There is the possibility to switch or immediately turn on the light fixture in a preset status, meaning previously set values of brightness and color temperature. Choosing one of the preset scenes, starting a timer, and dawn and dusk modes. On the third slide, an example of standard automation that will turn on the light when motion is detected. Now let's check compatibility with Acura Home, starting with the mainland China region, where I have the Acura M2 installed as a gateway. Firmware. Up to date as of the test date. Here the light fixture was also found in the list of supported devices. There was no need to reset the power five times. The chandelier went into pairing mode by itself after being removed from the gateway. The connection was successful. Specify the name, select an icon, and the light fixture appears in the list of devices and on the smart home control panel. Regarding the firmware, earlier during testing in my home, I said I would return to this issue. The firmware that the light fixture came with was identified as up-to-date in my home, but in Acura Home, a newer version was found. The installation takes a considerable amount of time, as Zigbee has a low speed. The main window of the plugin. Instead of sliders, as in my home, here control is implemented in the form of a circular slider for selecting brightness and a circle for setting the color temperature. There are five preset scenes, but in addition to them, you can create your own. In addition, there are even dynamic scenes, one preset and the possibility to create your own. However, the effect is only one, flickering or as it's called breathing. This is what it looks like. It can be set as light notifications for certain events.
In the general settings menu, everything is the same as we saw. The ability to group with other available light fixtures, state memory mode. This is a very important and necessary option, checking firmware, signal quality level, access for other accounts, and removal from the system. Now, for automations. In the if section, triggers and conditions, there are not two as in my home, but four options. Triggers are the turning on and off of the light fixture, and conditions are if it is on and if it is off, for use with other triggers. This allows for more flexible automations. In the action section, there are also many options. Turning on, turning off, and toggling state. Changing and setting a specified brightness and color temperature, there is a smooth change of these parameters. But for this, a dimmer is needed, like the Acura H1, the review link is in the description. Setting preset scenes, dynamic and static. Now let's check compatibility in the European region. Here I have another gateway installed, Acura E1, also updated to the current firmware version as of the test date. Here the list of compatible devices is much smaller, and our review hero is clearly not there. As I said earlier, the connection mode is the same for all, so I launched it, specifying another device, also a chandelier but the T1 model. The chandelier connected normally, that is, in fact, the information about this device on the servers of the European region is there, and it can be used. Next, everything is as we have already seen. We specify information about the light fixture, and it appears both in the menu of connected devices and as a card on the smart home control panel. All control and capabilities are fully analogous to what we saw in the plugin for the Chinese region, I won't repeat it. The main thing is that the chandelier works in the European region. Now let's look at compatibility with HomeKit. The Xiaomi gateway, which we started with, is compatible with this protocol and is connected to one of my test servers through the HomeKit controller integration, which in theory is no different from the native Apple one. Unfortunately, HomeKit support in the Xiaomi gateway is limited, as I have had the opportunity to ascertain on multiple occasions. Many devices that work with HomeKit through Acura gateways do not work through Xiaomi. The same goes for the chandelier. Through Xiaomi Gateway 3, it does not work with HomeKit. However, when working with the Acura M2, which is also connected to HomeKit as a bridge, it works fine. A tile of the light fixture appeared on the panel, displaying the status and controlling the turning on and off. Brightness and color temperature control are available both through the application and through a voice assistant. So for those users who use Acura gateways in conjunction with Apple HomeKit, the chandelier is fully suitable. Now let's move on to alternative control systems and start with the standard integration for working with Zigbee devices and Home Assistant, ZCHE. A USB Zigbee stick, Sunoff Zigbee Dongle E is used as a coordinator. In all cases, when removed from gateways, the chandelier automatically went into pairing mode, and during all testing, there was never a need to reset it by power. The device was detected and connected. Here is its page in Home Assistant. Like most other Zigbee devices with stationary power, the chandelier acts as a router, meaning it can connect and transmit data for other devices, increasing the coverage and capacity of the network. Objects are divided into three blocks. The first is controlling the light fixture, turning on and off, setting brightness and color temperature. Configuration. There are several options here that allow you to configure some parameters of the light fixture. I'll explain more in detail now. The identification button allows you to find the right light fixture if you have several. This is the light fixture control card. As I said, turning on, turning off, brightness, and color temperature. The on level parameter sets the brightness with which the light fixture will turn on if no specific values are passed to it. It is adjustable from 1 to 255. Here I set it to 121. And the light fixture turned on with a brightness of 47%. For the most part, this parameter is not very useful, as it is easier and more convenient to transmit the brightness directly when turning on. These options are for the smoothness of turning on and off respectively. Both work as expected, the higher the number here, the longer the brightness will increase and decrease when turning on or off. This parameter, judging by its name, does the same thing but immediately for both turning on and off. But in fact, it does not work, changes in it lead to nothing. These are also not very useful options, as the transition parameter can also be passed by the service when turning on or off the light fixture. The last slider, logically, should work like the previous one but for color temperature. However, 
In fact, it also does not work. It is now set to the far right position, 370. But the actual temperature value after turning on the light fixture is 251, which corresponds to 3984 Kelvin. Now I set it to the far left position, which corresponds to a value of 153. But in fact, nothing has changed for the light fixture. Like all previous parameters, the color temperature value can easily be set by automations. The identification button works. When it is pressed, the light fixture flashes several times. The main thing missing here is state memory. This option is more useful than all the previous ones combined, except for controlling the light fixture itself. Finally, let's move on to Zigbee 2 MQT, which is the system my chandelier is currently working with. The system is up to date as of the test date, and the coordinator is a USB Zigbee Stick Sunoff ZB Dongle P with the latest firmware. In Zigbee 2 MQTT, I enable the mode for connecting new devices, then remove the chandelier from Zche, and it, entering pairing mode, immediately reconnects here. Standard support, no external converters needed. As I already said, the chandelier acts as a router in the Zigbee network, and by clicking on its model name, which is a link, you can go to the device page on the official Zigbee 2 MQT portal. This is what it looks like. There is information about all available objects, settings, and other useful things. I recommend looking and reading. The Exposures page. The first two parameters are for controlling turning on and off, and a slider for brightness adjustment. Then comes the control of the color temperature, a slider, to set a precise value, or one of the four preset modes. By the way, for Acura light fixtures, I have observed this error for several years now, the neutral and warm settings set the same temperature, warm. This is a typo in the converter that has been carried over from the very first version of the Acura bulb. It's not really significant, but it's there. An important point is the presence of the state memory option, which works correctly, and this is an important feature. The other options are informational, such as the device temperature, the number of power disconnections after the last pairing, and the signal quality level. In the OTA tab, there is an option to check the firmware version. The current one, which I installed in Acura Home, is dated July 12, 2023. It is up to date. And definitely, let's check the operation in direct binding mode. For this, I use the most logical dimmer. The review link is in the description. Importantly, for group mode operation, which we need, the dimmer must be set to command mode. This can be done either by selecting it in the interface and to update on the dimmer, press its button, or by pressing the button on the dimmer three times. By the way, I've often encountered complaints that the dimmer supposedly stopped working, and the reason was precisely that someone pressed it three times, switching the mode. Next, we create a group, give it a random name of our choice, and specify an identifier in the form of numbers. It's important, try to make groups with identifiers from 200 and higher, or even four digits, otherwise, you might accidentally end up in a group with some device, which will also start turning on and off. Here is the group we created. I gave it the name and identifier 250. Click on it to open the group. In the list of devices, we find the dimmer and press the add button. But it won't appear in the group immediately, as it is an end device, which means it spends most of the time in sleep mode. Therefore, as in the case with setting the mode, you need to press its button to wake it up so that it can be added to the created group. Now we select the light fixture in the list. The chandelier is a router, it doesn't go into sleep mode, so it is added automatically. If necessary, we add other Zigbee light fixtures, they will all be controlled synchronously. Pressing the button on the dimmer turns the light fixture on and off, while turning it adjusts the brightness. Turning it while holding the button controls the color temperature. All this works without automations and independently of the smart home management server and even the coordinator. This is an independent, autonomous control channel. This is its special feature. This is what its card looks like in Home Assistant, where all the objects we saw on the Zigbee 2 MQT Exposures page have been carried over, including the object that tracks the firmware version's currency. Some options containing technical data are hidden by default. 
It often happens that even active options do not contain useful information and can be hidden to streamline the system. For example, the number of power disconnections. We go into the object settings and disable the activity option. I bought the chandelier to replace a Yeelight light fixture that has been working since 2017, the very first version that appeared on the market. I will leave a link to my old review in the description for those interested. By the way, the chandelier has been working excellently all these years, I haven't had any problems with it so far. The replacement is related to a desire to move away from Wi-Fi to Zigbee as much as possible. To be able to compare, I measured the light flux readings, 340 lux. I will say again, these readings are exclusively for comparison in the same conditions. The installation process took 5 minutes, I removed the old chandelier and installed the new one. No tricks or intricacies. I screwed it in with 3 screws from the set. This is how it looks without the diffuser. After I installed the diffuser, the light became uniform, which is its function, to diffuse the light flux. Visually, the brightness didn't change, although the lux meter showed a lower value, 290 lux. However, I had to shift the color temperature towards a cooler one. As compared to the Yi light chandelier, the Acura emits a warmer shade at the same transmitted values. I like the light fixture, especially considering its cost. It's high quality, bright, and supported in various smart home management systems, with state memory included. It's suitable for small spaces, 20 square meters, as claimed by the manufacturer, is only for those who like dimness. I think it's suitable for up to 10 square meters at most, and even that is a stretch, more like 7 to 8 square meters. I can't name any disadvantages for now. Everything fully satisfies me. I would like to see the option to order more powerful light fixtures with the same interface, especially since they exist for the internal Chinese market. That's all. I hope this video was useful and interesting for you. And I would appreciate your likes as they help promote the video on YouTube. If you don't want to miss new reviews and lessons, subscribe to my channel. In the description under the video, I will leave links to stores where you can order the chandelier, and it's best to do so during sales. I'll also include links to other reviews that I mentioned. Additionally, you will find links to my Telegram channel, Facebook page, and a group for discussing smart home topics. Join us, it will be interesting. Thank you for your attention, until new meetings. Peace to all.